Hello and welcome to the SQL tutorial with me, James from Matador Software. And primarily today, we're focusing on the syntax and a working example um, of pat index within SQL Server. And um, we will look at, we'll touch on uh, car index, we'll touch on len, we'll touch on substring and CTEs to look through a working example at the end as well. Now what we need to know is the pat index function returns the position in an integer format of the first occurrence of a pattern in a string. Now you can see here that I have aliased a car index function just as character position um, and there's some distinctions we need to speak about. So pat index allows you to use wildcard characters to search for patterns in a string. Car index doesn't. However, car index accepts a third argument which allows you to specify the start position um, of the search, whereas pat index doesn't. However, really a lot of this comes down to preference. Obviously with pat index as well, you'd be looking at patterns, but there's ways around both of these things. As you can see, car index there um, took a specified uh, amount of text max and it was able to locate the start position. However, pat index, we can start to introduce wildcard characters. So say, for example, here, this is an inventory piece, a valve. It's got some product naming after it. You can use the percentage sign as your wildcard to specify that 212 needs to take place at the end of the string. And you could do that. That's a very basic example of how you can start to introduce wildcard characters to improve your pattern searching. And there again, that gives you the inventory position. We'd expect to see 14. The index starts at 1 here in SQL. So we're able to correctly locate that item. Now we could also use, um, I'm just calling aliasing this, aliasing this again as symbol position, um, but we'll use pat index and we can use the hat, a space, zero to nine and A to Z to essentially rule out standard characters and we can define um, where we want a symbol to, to, what we want a symbol to be and where to search for that. So we can see here, that if we execute that, it picks up the question mark as a symbol um, at position 20 at the very end. However, if you had pretty rough questionnaire data, you may want to identify symbols that aren't just question marks, um, depending on the constraints and the way that your data flows through to your database. Now, you can see I could go ahead and change things just to show you how the error looks. So obviously there isn't a 255 at the end of the string or anywhere in the string. So it will give you um, zero. And as I've said in the comments at the top here, the pat index function will return zero if the pattern is not found or it'll return null if the input string is a null value. So again, we can go ahead and count that out. We know what we're expecting to see. And now we're going to go ahead and look at a working example because it's all good to identify the position of a string. Usually what you have to do is extract that somehow. So we can use other string functions in SQL Server or SQL to, um, to manipulate this. So I just have a column of string data. It's just a valve, um, an inventory item in our products table. Now you'll see here that we have three items in this example um, and we want to, we're want we going to essentially want to retrieve those items that have 212 in it. So let's say um, in this case that would be a, a specific um, product, maybe an expensive product that maybe um, alludes to the cost involved. So we have to search for that. So we can do this with pat index. You know, there'd be a case to do this with car index as well but a lot of it comes down to, to your preference um, as to how you actually go around this. So you'll understand why soon, but I am going to set this up as a CTE just for readability because we will need to also use um, the replace string function. And we're just gonna call this valve CTE. Um, so if you haven't used CTEs before, essentially I'm just doing this. Uh, it's more readable than, than a subquery typically. Um, and better practice a lot of the time. But what I'm doing is just selecting the valve. I want that column. I'm gonna alias or pat index search for those 212 products as code position. Um, and I'll just take it from that products table. And then I'll just show you what we're, what we're actually working with when we execute this. So we get the code position, 
And so basically where that 212 string starts and at the end, we don't have that 212 product identity present, it's 240. So that will just return zero as we'd expect. So now we've, we want to actually um, extract that code value. Maybe we want to put this into its own column eventually down the line. So what we'll, we'll call it high value code. We need to use a substring to actually tie this in with the length of the valve column. And then we can use path index to piece everything together. And we will restrict this. We will just say where the valve um, is like that wildcard operator. So we'll say 212, um, and that just restricts to the two products that we're actually interested in. Now, as you can see, um, there's, it's still not ideal. Um, you might wonder why I've put plus zero. That's just to get the correct um, point, because if I was to put minus or plus, um, you would see that the, the length of our high value code differs. So I'll leave that there. Now, one issue is that we have parentheses and quite often when you're using pat index or you're taking substrings that happens we can't guarantee the cleanliness um, of the of the data flowing through so we can simply just use replace now we could have used this um, without doing a cte but it would just be less readable so you can see i replace an empty string where that parenthesis was and we're now able to get those high value codes that contain 212 thanks to pat index and some string manipulation as usual, if you like this content, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and share. Thank you.